Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast on biomechanics and this particular screencast is looking at the fourth in our series of projectile motion and we're going to be concentrating this time on airflow diagrams. If you haven't seen the screencast on the Bernoulli principle before, re before watching this one then please make sure you go over that one, that screencast biomechanics projectile motion three on the Bernoulli principle. Okay, so before I show you how to draw an airflow diagram, let's look at the basic rules of airflow diagrams. Remember, previously, we've been asked to do a free body diagram, a flight path diagram, a parallel of forces diagram or a resultant force diagram, and this is the fourth diagram you may be asked to draw for a projectile, which is called an airflow diagram. So make sure you understand what diagram does what and what needs to be drawn in each before you use each one on an exam question. All right, so airflow diagrams. In an airflow diagram, you need to draw the air going over and under the object, and that opposes the direction of motion. So if an object is traveling one way, the airflow arrows must travel the opposite way. You must draw the airflow arrows using lines and they must have arrowheads on them to show the direction of the air traveling. You must include velocity and pressure and you must label it for above the object and below the object that is being thrown or the projectile. And finally you must label where the lift force is coming from and how much lift force is being applied. So briefly to recap bits of the Bernoulli principle which you need to make sure you understand. Firstly, as velocity increases, pressure decreases. So remember, the higher the velocity, the lower the pressure. The low velocity, the higher the pressure. Again, quick recap on the Bernoulli principle. Using an aerofoil shape, that's the picture you've got on the screen. Air above that object travels further, and so therefore the air increases in velocity. Air underneath the object travels a shorter distance, therefore it travels slightly less velocity than the air above, the blue line. Therefore, there is low pressure on top of the curved surface, so high velocity, low pressure above, and below on the straight line surface, there is low velocity, but high pressure. And it's the high pressure we're interested in because that's creating the lift to move the projectile upwards. And the final thing to remember, again, if you're writing this in an exam as opposed to just drawing these diagrams, fluids move from high pressure to low pressure. So never forget that. That's usually worth a mark in most Bernoulli-based questions. All right, so let's come to the diagram. So we start by drawing a discus. It doesn't need to be detailed. Almost draw it like your aerofoil shape with a flat surface un underneath. I've used a straightforward discus here, but try and make your bottom surface a little bit flatter than my diagram where possible. Okay, first things first, put your direction of travel line in. You must show where the discus is traveling to and which direction it goes, otherwise it isn't very clear. So you must have it on there. Now, as I mentioned before, you've then got to draw lines to show the airflow going over the top of the object. So the way to do this is exactly like you see on the screen. So over the top should be the curved side of the discus, because we're at an angle of attack of 17 degrees, and draw a very tight line to the top of that curve and make sure there is an arrowhead pointing opposite at the end of that line. So it's opposite to the direction of travel. So the discus is being thrown to the right as according to my direction of travel line in white, my arrowheads is the air resistance, so it must be going in the opposite direction. Now, how we show that the air is traveling faster is by creating tight lines on top of the curved surface. So your next line, when you're drawing it, must be quite tight to the first line, and then you repeat. I'd say a minimum of three air resistance lines need to be drawn. Four is usually good, though. However, I've run out of a bit of room. So four lines is ideal 
three if you're in a bit of a hurry, I guess. Um, but they must be tight together to show the air is traveling faster over the top of that curved surface. Once you've done those three lines, you can then start the lines underneath the discus, which should be the flat surface area. So again, draw your first line relatively tight to the flat surface line. It should be relatively straighter than the other lines. Again, don't forget your arrowheads at the end. You'll lose marks if you don't put the arrowheads on. Now to show this area is traveling slower, you need to leave a bigger gap between your next line. So your next line has a big gap between it compared to the top lines in blue. So the red lines are further apart. And again, add your third and fourth lines. So this now represents how fast the air is traveling. The red lines are traveling slower. The blue lines are traveling faster over the top of the object. The final things to do on your diagram, according to the rules from the first slide, is as follows. You've got to talk about the velocity and pressure on each of those lines to gain your marks. So all we need to write is the air on top is traveling at high velocity, but traveling with low pressure or creating low pressure. So all you need to write is high velocity, low pressure, but make sure you write that next to those blue lines or the tight lines. And then underneath, it's just the reverse, isn't it? So you've got low velocity lines with higher pressure. And your final thing you then need to add in is from the center of mass of the object, you must draw where the lift is coming from. So because the disc is starting to lift upwards from the center of mass, we draw a little line and we label that with an L to create the lift force. So this should be exactly like your diagram should be for the exam. Obviously you'll have a direction of travel line as well, but I couldn't fit everything in on, on my page, but we had that earlier on. So don't forget that. And this is what will get you the marks. So that's how to do an airflow diagram for a discus. I haven't done this for a javelin, but think about it's just the same process. You draw the javelin in, fast lines over the top, bigger gap lines underneath, high velocity, low pressure, low velocity, high pressure, and add your lift line up. So that's for you to think about. The problem then comes when you're then asked to do a free body diagram for the discus. This is an airflow diagram, but let's say you're asked to draw a free body diagram for the discus. Now things we already know about the free body diagram, put the direction of travel line in, from the center of mass, we do the air resistance. The discus is in mid flight, so we've thrown it quite fast, so there's a long air resistance line. Though it's quite a heavy object, a discus, so there's still a fairly lengthy weight line. However, you will then need to add the lift force on your diagram to get the marks when you draw a discus. And we know where the lift comes from because we've just drawn it on the previous diagram. So all you need to do on your free body diagram is add the lift force from the center of mass. Okay. Now, you will then need to write an equation beside your discus. And at this point, you will then need to write air resistance is greater than weight minus lift. So AR is greater than W minus L. Because the lift force is counteracting the weight force, it then means air resistance is great. And therefore, air resistance is the dominant force. And so therefore you get a parabolic, a non-parabolic flight path when you throw a discus. And that is the reason, because you've got the lift force. Again, you might be asked to draw a resultant force or a parallel of forces diagram for the discus. And if you are, then you've got to think about the lift force all the time. So remember how we do the resultant force diagrams. We start off with a free body diagram. So direction of travel, air resistance and weight, which we've just met. We then put in our dotted lines to create the parallelogram. And from the center of mass to the angle of the corner, we label that resultant force. However, we now need to think about lift. And the way we add this, we can't put the arrow upwards from the center of mass because then 
we won't have our parallelogram anymore. So we simply add it next to the W. We just add in that weight minus lift is part of that equation against the air resistance. And again, you might then wish to write a simple equation beside your diagram saying that air resistance AR is greater than weight minus lift W minus L. The flight path diagrams for a discus don't change. Okay, so we know it's a non parabolic flight path because of the lift. So therefore, you draw yourself a little discus and the arrow in the direction it is traveling. And remember to write that it's a non parabolic flight path. If you really wanted to, you could write also the equation of AR is greater than W minus L. OK, so as I mentioned, you might also get asked to draw this for a javelin or another object. The principles are the same. Make sure you go over the airflow diagram parts of this screencast, because that's the new part that you have to understand. And then make sure that you understand that you've got to add lift force to literally all of the other diagrams except the flight path diagram. So never forget that. OK, thanks again for watching. If you need any more help with A-Level PE or any other aspect of biomechanics, please head to the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube.